Today I thought I would give you 10 reasons that king and sand boas make great pets. First let's talk about their setups a little bit. I can in sand boas are from very dry and arid places, so they're going to need very low humidity in their enclosures. Now obviously it's an opinion on whether you like tropical setups more or moderate setups or dry desert sort of setups. However, I think generally speaking, it's easier to maintain the dry ones because unless you're in a region or country or state with very high humidity naturally, it's usually easier when they need low humidity. For example, my room uh, depends on the time of year, but here in North Carolina where I am, humidity ranges between 25 and 50% or so. Right now it's at about 30% because we are in the winter. However, that means that I really don't have to do anything extra for the sand boa. They're adapted to just shed in those environments normally, so I don't even have to raise the humidity. You can make a uh, sh shed moist moist box, shed box. I've never made one for snakes, I just do it for my geckos. But regardless, you don't have to like bump the humidity up a lot like you might need to for a ball python or other types of boas. Secondly, these are very small snakes. That's, it's kind of obvious. This is not an adult, by the way. They get around three feet, a bit smaller if it's a male. But either way, that's still a very small snake. I would say it's probably the smallest of the species that really aren't that hard to get. Like obviously there's lots of smaller snake species than that, but the this is probably like the smallest easiest small ease It's probably the smallest of the easier snakes out there, I think. There's a few, but you get the idea, hopefully. And then with that, they're small selves mean that they can have small enclosures so they're not going to take up a bunch of space in your room or wherever but that kind of goes for any snake next up although these are pretty common you can find them without too much difficulty and you can find lots of info on them so it's not super hard but at the same time they are not one of the big like reptiles you see everywhere what i'm trying to say is they're not a ball python or a corn snake which are everywhere so if you want something that is still generally simple but a bit more unique, I would say sand boas currently fall there. Who knows how it'll be in like five or 10 years, I'm sure it'll shift, so maybe they'll be the one that everybody has, but right now pretty much everyone has a ball python or a corn snake, which I love both of those species too. Ball pythons are a little better, in my opinion. People get tired of me talking about ball pythons and tired of everyone talking about them, so maybe it is a good idea for you to go with a sand boa, because like I said, there's definitely a community for them. I've never found anyone that doesn't like a sand boa. So basically, you won't have difficulty finding info on them or being worried about finding the animal itself, but it's not one of those like top three species that you're just gonna see plastered everywhere. Now, there are multiple morphs available for sand boas. This is just a normal Kenyan sand boa. I love the normals. I kinda like any animal that has orange or yellow on it. I don't know why. So I'm certainly happy with the normal, but there are lots of really cool morphs. Again, not as many morphs as like a ball python or corn snake. I know we keep going back to those two, but it's a great way to compare them. Uh, but with that said, there's still lots of different ones. There's like, I don't know the actual names of them. That's not good. There's a, a black and white one, a, like a pinkish one, a more orange one, a less orange one, a more pale one. There's all sorts of different kinds. I should really know those names. Uh, but either way, you can not only have a more unique species itself, but on top of that, you can find a pretty cool morph, which they do get more expensive, the more rare they get, but it's not like outrageously priced at some ridiculously high number. There's probably some that are really expensive though. Next up, speaking of the sand boas and how they look color-wise and stuff, on top of that, they just have such a weird body shape. That's also very unique about them. Their head and tail look the same. Half the time you don't even know which is which. You just have to see which side a tongue comes out of. Of course, the tail's a little bit pointier, but just overall, it's just this really stocky looking, chunky, round snake that has like these crinkly scales in the back and these smooth ones up front. And the face just looks ridiculously weird. And that's one of the great things about them. You really can't compare them to other types of snakes. So most colubrids, like a corn snake and a rat snake and a king snake, they all have those alike things in them. But sand boas, they are boas just like every other boa, but at the same time, they just have these super unique things about them. There's also multiple types of sand boas, which you can't forget, that have even more weird shapes. So that's just something kind of cool about them. Next up, they have live birth. This is not unique to them, this is with all boas. 
Uh, but if you are thinking of maybe breeding something in the future, which I haven't done, but I would love to with sand boas, uh, you, there's no eggs, there's no incubation period, there's none of that. They just breed, grow the babies, and shoot them out, and then you've got all your children there. Because if you don't know things like colubrids and pythons and all the other snakes, usually the majority of them are going to lay eggs, which then have to be incubated for a long time. This can be kind of expensive. You might have eggs that end up drying out or rotting or dying. And of course, there's not like a guarantee that all the babies are just gonna come out perfectly fine, but it really cuts out a lot of the work for you because your sand boa will incubate them for you inside their body. Next up, they are ambush eaters. Why does this matter? It doesn't really, but I think it's pretty cool. When you think of any snake, I kind of think them as nature's mouse traps, I guess, because they help uh, deal with rodent populations and everything. But sand boas are really like a mouse trap when they eat. They do not move, they sit perfectly still, they don't seek out the food, they don't follow the food, they just sit there and wait for it to come up to them. And then as soon as the mouse is basically touches them, they ambush. I'm, I can't, I don't know how to represent an ambush, but immediately they grab the animal and eat. So overall the eating's about the same, but it's just really one of those little things that's really unique. Like when I go around feeding all the animals, it's like, yeah, the ball pythons, they come up, they take them and everything, but the sand boas, it's just really different to see. Next up, they're quite easy to handle. Uh, sand boas, they are burrowers, so they usually like to be kind of low down and hidden and stuff, but at the same time, they are super slow and super easy to actually hold on to. A baby corn snake or a juvenile corn snake can be pretty fast, get out of your hands, slip away, which I don't want to like scare you away from corn snakes, it's perfectly manageable. But compared to sand boas, they are much more slinky and ready to whoop, shoot away. Uh, but sand boas, they just chill out, they're very slow, and they really love to sit in hoodie pockets. Next up, we can talk about their prey a little bit. Now, they can be weird about eating, but I think we can get into that another time. Half one of the pros about feeding them is because they're so small, they're never really going to outgrow mice. I've never seen one that eats something like bigger than a mouse. Of course, you can get them smaller rats if you do want to do rats. People sometimes say that rats are just healthier in general. But if you are just interested in feeding mice, which the majority do, you're not going to have to later switch them over to some sort of huge prey. Usually, as far as I know, they can always just stick to some of the larger sizes of mice compared to smaller other things. I forgot to fill in reason number 10. Uh, f finally, let's see, what's, what's the 10th thing? to make this an even number. Um, number 10, they can, they can be a neck charm. Okay, that's it. But either way, those are nine and a half reasons as to why Kenyan sand boas can make really great pets. Of course, there's downsides to every animal, which like I said, if you are interested, let me know if you're interested. I can talk more about some of the negatives and more difficulties with them, but I've been very happy with mine. Uh, I'm very glad that I got her. I guess I got her like a year and a half ago or so. It's been really fun. She's been growing a ton and getting pretty fat, but she still has a way to go. But let me know some other reasons. I'm sure there's more than nine and a half, so leave yours below. Uh, but on this channel, we do all sorts of reptile-y things. So if you're interested in that, you can find all sorts of species and care guides and I don't know. It's just the most random stuff. I guess you just have to explore yourself. But that'll be it for this video. So I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.